Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another F1 League Racing season. This time on F1 22, of course. This is PSGL Season 31, uh, Round 1, around the Bahrain International Circuit. We're heading out for our first Q1 run um, of qualifying. Uh, so we've already done a, a lap on the intermediates, but that was just to check if everything was okay. As you can see there, me and Marcel Kakifer are the only one that have done that. And now heading out for our first round. As you can see there, the calendar for the season. Bahrain, uh, Kota, Austria, then Miami, spa Francorchamps, Mexico, Suzuka, Monza, Abu Dhabi, and then the finale will be in Brazil. So, gonna be a good, good season. I like those tracks. Um, very good racing track. So, can't wait to race on all of them. And as you can see, 20 cars heading out at the same time, basically. So it is going to be uh, a busy time on track. But we've got quite a bit of a gap in front of us. So I think we're pretty good with traffic. Um, as you can see, it is piling up in the last sector for a lot of people there. So we have enough space to warm up our tires. Which is a lot more of a thing on this game, of course, this year. And you need to keep that in mind. Uh, with your outlap because you can't have too much traffic because you will struggle with tire temperature then on your push lap but we won't have that issue because we've got a big enough of a gap as we're now about to start a lap just creating that last little bit of heat in our front tires before we start this very important first Q1 lap um, it's a little bit easier qualifying as on the last game simply because we've got one extra set of tires uh, one extra set of softs, I must say. You cannot qualify on the mediums anymore. You've only got softs available. So, it makes it a little bit less pressurized uh, in Q1. Which is good for us. As I tend to struggle a little bit in Q1 usually compared to others. But, we have to wait and see in this first Q1 session. Of course, brand new game. I've got no idea how others will perform and how we are going to perform. How we're going to be setup wise. It's the back end steps out a little bit there through the first act you can see with 900 down Jake Benham as Thomas Ronar gets a uh, provisional pole position here in Q1 which is just gonna keep tumbling down the lap time as now into this very difficult left hander easy to lock up the left front and good rotation there opening the DRS once again as we head towards this very difficult left hander Frederick Rasmussen goes to provisional pole position usually he's very strong in Q1 so it's gonna be a tough one to beat here in Q1 which is not necessary all we need to do is get top 15 to get into um, Q2 as the back end wants to step out again and we're not on a great lap not gonna lie a lot of moments so far on this lap as we head into the final corner here fourth gear and a smooth exit easy to lose the back end into the last corner easy to get caught out on that curb coming across the line and it's only P14 for now. And that's not going to be good enough. So we're going to have to go oh, again. We have to go again. In this yeah. session. I think so too. Um, as we drop down to P15. Of course, if we stay in P15, that will be great. But very unlikely because people will go out again just like us. Um, and improve. As we now have put on our second set of softs for this qualifying session. Ideally. We would have only done one lap, but we are not fast enough at the moment, it looks like, um, to do that. And I think it's going to be quite a struggle to even make it into Q2 at this point, because the pace does not seem to be there. Even though at a few moments, it, it was not a terrible lap. It didn't look like a terrible lap, didn't feel like a terrible lap. As we go through the left kink, and you can see no time gain. We've actually lost a few thousands of a second as we open the DRS into turn 4. And here we had a moment on our last lap, so let's see if we can improve a little bit. We can, only half a tenth. And we're going to have to gain quite a bit more on this lap. If we want to make it into Q2. Bit of understeer through that left-hander. And now we need to somehow find time. And we're still only half a tenth up on our previous lap. Whereas realistically we're probably going to have to find two tenths at least. As we get a power down and we open the DRS still. Only just over half a tenth up on our previous lap. And this is not going to be good enough. You can see our teammate Danny Moreno only in P13 as well. 
Um, as Jake Benham has jumped ahead of us and now we are officially in the drop zone. P17 it is. We need to improve. We're 1.6 tons up on Jake Benham. But a lot of people still to improve their lap time in this qualifying session into the final corner then. We're going to be breaking as late as possible into the final corner to try and maximize our lap time. But it's only going to be 1.2 tons up. Is it going to be enough to make it into Q2? It isn't, and we're down in P16. Well, and out of qualifying. As you can see there. No worries. I'll fight it um, back in the race. Our teammate Danny Moreno is still in P17, about to finish oh. his lap as Marcel Kiefer spins around, struggling as well in this qualifying session. And with still quite a lot of people to finish their laps. Uh, you can see. Marcel Kiefer out as well as our teammate Danny Moreno did make it into Q2 as you can see there um, He made it into Q3 as well See he's there in P18 but a lot of uh, P8 sorry But a lot of good drivers out in Q2 as well Joshi Dowu, Danny Beresne uh, um, Yoni Tormala John Evans usually pretty fast as well All out in this Q2 session Frederick Rasmussen just about making it into Q3 By um, Half a tenth, so a very close session there. And then Q3 uh, results coming up in a second. You can see there Lucas Blakely got pole with a 26.846 out of Barry Wormand, Frederick Rasmussen, and our teammate Danny Moreno down in P10 after invalidating his first lap and not improving, uh, I think so. Or maybe the other way around. I don't know exactly what happened to him. But onto the race now. We're going to be starting on the mediums, just like a lot of other people. So if we want to um, make overtakes, it's going to have to be done on Thank you. raw pace. And on-track overtake strategy is not going to play a big part here. As everyone can just choose their tire compounds uh, on this game, of course. Not like last game where oh you had my to... God, my game is laggy. Not like last game where you could, um, well, if you start outside of the top 10, you could choose your tire um, or qualify on the mediums in Q2 and then you were forced on the mediums, for example. But now you can just choose your tires, um, no matter what tire you qualify on. But now onto the race when starting P17 here in PSL round 1 is gonna be lights out and away we go. Initially good start, but then a bit too much wheel spin. Still got a bit of a better start than John Evans off the line. And into turn one, we're going to go be going around the outside here. Trying to make some moves behind time and shooter. Into the next left-hander then. Very tight section and there's been an incident ahead of us. Somehow we get caught damage. up in it. So. And luckily, we did not get any damage. Um, so we're still in P17 with Tomek Paracis on the softs behind us. Trying to make a move on time and shooter around the outside here. He leaves us the space, but Tomek on the inside of us there, uh, trying to make a move. He is going to have much more grip, of course. So, I'm not going to fight this too hard. Um, you can see there, on this front left end plate, he does have damage. But, on this game, front wing damage has a little bit of a less effect, of course. Uh, I think it's the same in real life, just because the ground effect so much for the downforce gets created by the floor. Because of the ground effect, that Tomic is not going to be struggling too bad with understeer, with that front wing damage. And he's still going to be faster than most medium runners on those softs. So, um, we're not going to fight him just yet, unless his tires drop off in a few laps. Uh, we're just going to try and sit behind and profit from, uh, from his DRS if he can stay within that one second window. Now, time in shooter, P16. We've dropped one position, of course. Incident on the opening lap probably didn't really help as Lucas Blakely leads the way after lap 1 with Frederick Rasmussen in P2 Lap 5 then uh, Tomek has managed to overtake Timon as uh, Tomek was a little bit wide there and pulls off to the left Initially I thought he was gonna let Timon through but he did not uh, That was actually just him going very defensive as we go into the next left hander Timon gets squeezed a little bit on the exit but uh, manages to keep it on track, lose a bit of time though, and now we're right behind him, so he's lost quite a bit of time. We've got 100% battery basically, 
So we can push pretty hard on the battery side and uh, try and make a move soon. Maybe on Tomek. I think time will go for a move on Tomek once again. As Tomek and Softs, I think, are just dropping off pretty harshly at the moment. So um, Timon is going to go for the move here. You can see he's using his overtake button to make a move here on lap 6. And we're going to try to make a move ASAP as well. Um, because Tomek, his tires are going to degrade so much faster over the next few laps uh, compared to ours. That we just have to get past, otherwise we're going to lose so much time. On to lap 7 now then. You can see Timon has already built quite the gap to Tomek. Um, who is really struggling now on these tires. So we're going to go for the move now on the next lap as well. Um, simply because we have to. We can't afford to sit another lap behind him. Uh, with his damage front wing and the grading tires. So DRS open here. And using the ERS we have stored. And up to P17 we go again. Now we need to hunt down Time and Shooter in P16. Also, a Dutch guy, F1 Esports driver for Alfa Romeo last season. I'm not sure if he's with Aston Martin this season or if he's with any team, but uh, he's driving an Aston Martin in PSL. Uh, very much a tier 1 warty driver. Now, some soft turners have boxed already. As you can see, we're up to P15. Nicolas Longe, Danny Beresne, and Tomek Perazzi all started on the softs. And I've gone on to the mediums or the hearts, I think so. As time and shooter a goes for a move down the inside on Jen Evans, who is flashing, which means he has less than 10% battery. And, well, that just invites me to get past him um, soon in the next few laps as well. Uh, as you can see now, lap 12, end of lap 12. And in those one and a half laps, John surely did not um, manage to recharge his battery a lot. So we're going to turn on the overtake. And go for a move here into turn one. He's going defensive here. And we are going to be going around the outside. And go for the switchback move here basically. As Timon gets a big snap of oversteer. Which is not really what we needed. Because now it's going to be a three way fight into turn four. And we're going to be almost making a double overtake into this next right. And then we leave the space for Timon on the outside. And oh, up no to idea. P14. Can you hear me say it's not okay, ideal because we've lost so much time with that battling. And yeah, now we've lost the DRS to Danny Moreno and Marcel Kiefer. Uh, who are 2.2 seconds ahead of us. Um, and they don't have DRS as well from the top 10. So not an ideal situation right now at the moment. As ideally we want to be in that P10 spot, P11 spot right in the DRS of the leading train. But now we're going to have to be pushing really hard in the next few laps to make up for that and get back. But as we move on to lap 17, you can see we've only dropped more time to Marcel Kiefer. Uh, I want to recharge my battery behind Tynan, but I think the pace was just a little bit too low. And that was a mistake for me to sit back for too long. I reckon there's any chance I can close that gap. I don't think so, I'm honest. Not without some help. Yeah, as you can hear, um, my engineer Sam say, very unlikely we're going to close that gap. I did use a lot of my battery. Yes, we set the fastest lap of the race, actually, on lap 18 on this set of mediums. Marcel Kiever and Yoni Tormela have gone into the box for a new set of softs. Um, but as I said, we used a lot of our battery there um, to try and close the gap a little bit to the top 10. But... Yeah, a very tough situation win. We close the gap more to our teammate Danny Moreno. Another second gained. As uh, Joshi Dowu and a lot more people have boxed for a new set of softs. Uh, Barry Borman. All the leaders basically have come in apart from Lucas Blakely. Um, and then there's quite a gap to Brendan Lee, Danny Moreno. And someone in Williams or Alpine in P2. I'm not sure. But all I know, we have to push... As hard as we can. Danny Bresney set the fast lap of the race. Lap 22 now. End of lap 22. Our teammate Danny Moreno boxing again. As he gained a bit of time back to us. Probably just ERS wise. Had more than us. Um, 
cards we used a lot to gain a lot of time um, before. But now Barry Merman 10 seconds behind us sets the fast lap of the race, followed by Lucas Blakely. 10 seconds behind us. As you can hear me say, we're in a risk of a puncture. The reason I stayed out so long was just hoping for a safety car. As we're only fighting Looks for. Looks like Jake's pulled the undercut, by the way. Yeah. Fucking hope so. I was just hoping for a safety car because even if we did pit on a normal lap like lap 19, we would only be fighting for one or two points anyway, maybe a few more. But of course, we want to fight for wins, so that's why I risked it. Uh, staying out a few more laps. It probably lost us a little bit of total race time, but I think it was well worth the risk staying out and risking it for a late safety car because that way we get a free pit stop and rejoin on a brand new set of tires right in the mix and that way we can fight for maybe the win or the podium so coming out right behind Jake Benham one second and as you can see that time and shooter um, five seconds ahead of us when we were one second ahead when he boxed in lap 19 so we've lost a good six maybe seven seconds um, right here but that's the risk we took and we have to accept that pain right here of course we have fresh tires so we will make up time again because see, we've already lost over a second to a Jake Benham um, because our tires were cold coming out of the pits just like everyone else and that has lost us a lot of time um, but it is what it is everyone has the same there on that front and now lap 27 um, end of lap 27 we have gained a lot of time back as you can see big incident Wilson huge and Danny Moreno have collided I think so at least and now we've gained two positions time and shoot has lost a lot of time there and now we could be fighting maybe for a few points depending on what happens up front uh, as you can see, the top three has absolutely pulled off into the distance. Um, Frederik Rasmussen leading ahead of Barry Borman, I think so, and then Lucas Blakely in P3. I'm not sure. But we're fighting for P12 right here, with two laps remaining. And you don't know how hard the people ahead will fight. You can see time and shooter flashing, which means less than 10% battery, of course, low deployment. And now we just have to hope for incidents, maybe some penalties. Uh, to try and get points because at the moment on raw pace we are not gonna gain enough to the top 10 to get points so that's 28% yeah, Jake has pretty much uh, same battery to us and of course he will um, attack time and shoot on this lap so it's not for points, but it might turn into points um, once penalties or incidents happen in this last lap. lap. Of course, it's a very tightly packed um, P3 to P10, and there are definitely going to be a lot of battles. Jake Panham goes for the move on time and shooter. Who is flashing? I decided not to use my battery yet, as I felt like it was better to save it for a better opportunity in this last lap. And now once again, we are going to get DRS. We have the tire advantages. Josh Hidowu has spun to the infield there. And now we are fighting for P11, basically. You see the guys in P10 and P9 are battling hard as well. So they're losing a lot of time at the moment. And we might be fighting for one or two points here. You see time is struggling a little bit more than us on those old softs. And now we're going to be fighting for P12 first and then see if we can gain a little bit more um, we're gonna get DRS just like time and shooter here on this next raid so not really an overtaking opportunity um, right yet because we are behind the DRS train they're fighting up front which gives us the opportunity Yoni Tormala goes wide there Jake Benham gets the move around the inside and then the outside for this next right hander Jake trying to have a look he has fresh tires of course Johnny Tomala runs wide probably struggling with tires and now we're gonna turn on the overtake button and go for the move on time and into the final corner also 
going for the move on Yoni Tomla. Just because we had so much more battery, we have been able to overtake these guys. And now up to the line, it is going to be only P11, unfortunately. And no points. At least that's what I thought. Until post race penalties P11, got applied. Dude. And luckily, after penalties from Thomas Ronhar and Brandon Lee um, for on track incidents, we finished at P9. After they both got a 10 second penalty. So, still two points in the back. Last season, we also started off with a P9, I think so, if I remember correctly. So, at the moment, we're just too slow. It is what it is, it's a fact. Um, we are not fast enough. And for the next race, there we just have to find a lot of time. Otherwise, we're not in this championship hunt. So, I hope you guys, nonetheless, enjoyed this league racing video. Even though we struggled, make sure to like and subscribe if you guys want to see more. And see you guys next time.